Hi, I'm Ron Tanner from House Love, and today we're in the back of our custom camper van, and we're going to talk about electricity. The main thing you need to know is that electricity in a camper is just like electricity in a boat. So you will need to consult with a marine electrician, which is what I did. Now I'm going to share with you everything that I know, but I can't give you all the details because you will need some, you, you will need an expert to double check that you've got that right. Because the one thing you don't want to do is to burn down your van or your camper. So let's get started. You're going to need an auxiliary battery to power all the stuff in your cabin of your van. And chances are you're going to need more than one. So these batteries constitute your battery bank. And the bank does not generate energy. It, say, it, it, it collects it. It's just a place to put all your electricity. There are four ways to collect that electricity. One is just to plug the battery bank into an external power source. The second way is to plug it into a generator, which will fill it with electricity. The third way is to attach the battery bank to a feed from your alternator and that will generate electricity and the fourth way is to attach it to your solar panels on the roof of your van. Now because the generator is powered by propane gas or diesel and it's kind of bulky it's really ideally suited for large rigs which can hold it in containers underneath or outside. If you want to drag that thing around and set it up every time you park, great, but most of us really don't want to go through that hassle. So we're going to use the other three methods that is powering from an outside source, powering from our alternator and also powering from our solar panels. This way, when we're driving, we are filling our battery bank with electricity from the alternator and when we're parked, we get power from our solar panels or we can plug into an external source. Now, when we're looking at electricity, we're looking at two kinds and that's DC direct current and that's the kind of stuff that's in the batteries and also alternating current, which is the stuff that's in our houses and that's the stuff we're used to. Now, we need to decide which is DC and which is AC uh, uses in our van. So here I've located six DC lights that I want in my van. I've also located two DC outlets that I need in my van <coughs> to power other DC uh, appliances. I have a ceiling fan that's DC powered. I also have a water pump in the back of the van that's DC powered. And I have a refrigerator that's DC powered. So let me show you the DC outlet. The DC outlet is, is like a cigarette, you know, cigarette lighter outlet that we're used to in old, old automobiles. Very simple. And here's a typical uh, DC powered light in my van. It's a little incandescent thing. Now for AC power, I have a roof mounted air conditioner. I also have a water heater under the sink. I have a microwave or toaster oven. And also I have two AC outlets for AC appliances in the van. Let me show you the AC. These are, these are just like the kind you have in your house, but make sure they're GFIs. They have ground fault interrupters because you have too many water sources uh, in the van and you need to be very safe that way. Now, to calculate how much electricity you are going to use on any given day, you have to add up amp hours. For instance, my DC powered fridge eats up one amp per hour and it, you know, in a day it'll take up 10 amps. We look at other things like the water pump, a couple of lights, fans, and we can add this up and mine low end comes up to 42 amps. But if you've got luxury items like a laptop, TV, we'll add at least 65 more to that. And that gives me a total of 107, which is still a little bit low. But um, <clears throat> when we're looking at batteries, all of them are rated at amp hours, but they're really overestimated. Most batteries are rated for 220 amp hours. You're going to get a lot less than that. So what I'm saying is this. You'll need probably at least two 12-volt batteries. Now, let me show you my battery bank. I have six AGM 6-volt batteries. And I have 6-volt because 6-volt are heavier duty than 12-volt and you can, you can combine these and make three 12-volt batteries. You need to do a little research on this. It's worth your time just to, just to figure out what this is all about. When we're talking about batteries, we're talking about deep cycle batteries. And these are also called forklift batteries or golf cart batteries. Now there are three variations of deep cycle. The first is wet cell. They're the most cost effective but they demand the most maintenance, which we'll talk about. Gelled are, uh, they're just too touchy. They're not recommended. Most people don't. AGM, most expensive, but they demand no maintenance whatsoever. So here are your two choices. Flooded, high maintenance but cheaper. AGM, no maintenance but expensive. Now, the flooded. 
You have to ventilate them. You have to check their water regularly. And they must be isolated from all spark sources because they off-gas a lot of hydrogen and they can blow up. Don't let that freak you out. These are good batteries. They can, they can service you very well, but you need to do some research. You need to know what you're getting into. And uh, that'll serve you well. Connecting your batteries to your alternator is simple. Don't forget you have a starter battery in your engine compartment, and that's powered by your alternator. So we're going to exploit the alternator's power and use that also for our battery bank in the back. And so you have the alternator connected to your starter battery, and we're going to look at that clamp that's at the, uh, the, the hot post. We're going to extend that so that we can attach another line to that and draw that all the way back to the battery bank. Here's my starter battery. This is the extended clamp I'm talking about. And this is the line that we want to draw back to the battery bank. Now, when you get back there, you're going to have to install an isolator to separate the battery bank from your starter battery so that one won't drain the other. Also, we need a 30 amp fuse between the battery bank and this line to protect it from surges and shorts and things like that. And finally, we need an on-off switch because we don't want to be powering the battery bank all the time. And this switch will be up there at your dashboard. Now, connecting the battery bank to solar panels is fairly easy. Here's my rig. Notice that I have an air conditioner on the top and also a ceiling fan. So I got to work around those. I've got four panels up there and they're easy to connect and you'll talk to your solar people and they'll help you with that. You gotta punch a hole in the roof and draw that line down to the controller and the controller is going to protect the battery from surges and again we're always protecting the battery bank. Now talk to the solar people you're, you're dealing with. They're going to walk you through this. There are only four connections here but again it's very important to know that that hot connection to the battery has a 30 amp fuse. We're always fusing these things to keep the batteries protected from any surges and overcharging. Here's my controller. You can see I'm pulling 30 volts from my panels which is pretty good. Now how many panels do you need? Well You've got to add your amp hours to get some idea of that. But there is no definitive formula for figuring out how much th this wattage is going to yield uh, because it depends on the make of the solar panels, the weather, how old the panels are. There are a lot of variables and it gets, you know, it's just not possible to figure it out definitively. But here is a rough estimate. Say 80 watts will give me 4 amps and 50 will give me 3 amps. So I get a total of maybe 160 amps from my, uh, from my system, which is pretty good. So let's connect to shore power now. To do that, you've got to have an inverter. And, and, and there are three kinds to choose from. There's the square wave, there's the modified sine wave, and then there is the full sine wave. And you can choose either the modified or full sine wave. You do not want the square wave because it's imperfect. You can only, it only powers power tools. It can't power laptops or TVs or anything like that. So keep that in mind. Also, you want a high efficiency inverter, otherwise you're wasting your money. Otherwise you're getting some, you know, really compromised power source. Here's how the inverter works. It draws power AC from outside the van and it will dump that into your battery bank as DC power. When you want to withdraw that from the bank, you, it will convert it back to AC. If you don't need AC, then you can just draw it straight from the battery bank as DC power. Now, in order to get AC power into your van, you've got to have a three-pronged 30 amp receptacle for plug-ins. And this is what it looks like. And it will be inside your van or in the wall of your van. And this is what the 30 amp power cord looks like. And this is what the connector looks like inside the van. You draw the line inside, and this is what plugs inside the van, and this is what plugs outside the van. Again, three prongs, 30 amps, it's very easy. Charging the batteries, you've got to have a voltage meter. You can either have digital or analog. I love analog because I'm old-fashioned. But here's the thing. A fully charged battery is 12.6 volts, period. The charge range is between 12 and 14 volts. If you drop down to 10 and a half volts, your battery is flat empty and you're beginning to damage it. So as soon as your voltage meter hits 12, you've got to start charging, period. And you need a three-stage charger for deep cell batteries. Uh, you cannot stent on getting a charger because these have to charge very slowly. They, dis they discharge their energy slowly and they need to charge very slowly. These are the three stages. Do some research and find out what this is all about. High quality inverters often come with three stage chargers, so look for those. If you don't have a good charger, you can easily burn up your battery. 
Now, now you've got all this energy in these batteries, you've got to distribute it to your appliances. So you're pulling this power up to a distribution panel, actually two, one for DC, one for AC. Now at the panel, you're going to have both 12 amp and 15 amp lines, depending on the, the power draw from the appliances. Now this is what these lines look like. This is insulated three wire cable, and it's boat cable. You want marine supplies here. It's three wires, here they are, and you're pulling these to the back of your distribution panel, and you're attaching these two breakers inside these panels. And here's how the breaker works. The breakers are attached directly to your power feed, and each breaker is responsible for one and only one appliance. And so you've got a hot line coming from the breaker to the appliance. You have to complement that with a neutral line to complete the circuit and then a green line to ground the whole thing. And again, you know, you need to get some help, do some research on this. What happens is if an appliance is drawing too much electricity, the breaker is going to sense that and it's going to turn off. And it's going to keep that power from getting into that line and burning up your van. Now here's my uh, AC uh, breaker panel and then my DC breaker panel, again a voltage meter and the breakers and I've also got water meters for my holding tanks and we've already talked about the controller for the solar panel and then of course there's my uh, outlet for an external hookup and with a breaker for that as well. Alright, those are the basics of camper van and RV electricity. Now I did not show you all the details because that's something you have to learn from a marine electrician. And I'm not a marine electrician. This is one do-it-yourself job where you need some backup unless you have professional training as an electrician. My name is Ron. Jill is my partner. We are House Love. And you can find out more about our camper van at vanadventures.com. Good luck with your project. It's a wonderful world. Here you go. Right. Hello, go snow. I've got more than my share. Baby, I must be lucky through and through. It's a wonderful world, loving, wonderful you.